Hey, what's up? This is the NLA Ninja with Rampant Design Tools, and in this edition of Running Rampant, I'll show you how to use Studio Flares. Studio Flares are a collection of 531 QuickTime clips of optical flares that can be inserted into any video and punch up the quality instantly. Available in 2K, 4K, and 5K via immediate download or a USB 3.0 drive, these flares can be utilized in very unique ways. Since these are drag and drop elements, they work in all popular editing and compositing software such as Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Motion, Avid Media Composer, and more. Today, I'll show you some examples of how to get creative with studio flares. For these examples, I'll be using Final Cut Pro X and Adobe Premiere Pro. For my first example, I will break down how I utilize flares for free templates from iDustrial Revolution and Motion Master Templates. For my second example, I will show you how to create a music video effect with Studio Flares and one of my Assemble Effects presets. Without further ado, let's run Rampant. I'm in Final Cut Pro X, and I have two free motion templates at play in my timeline. The first one is from iDustrial Revolution, which is called Infinity Stage. It's a title template that takes the video underneath it and animates it from the ground up while rotating in 3D space, with text in front of it. From what I observed, this template would be a great end tag for a YouTube video or whatever else you could think of. I use Studio Flares to enhance the presentation as the infinite background seemed to lack that pop I look for in end tags. So allow me to break down what I did. I used a screenshot of the Rampant Design website and placed it on the primary storyline. Next, I applied the XFX Infinity Stage title template on the secondary storyline. I made sure that it extended the length of my screenshot. In the inspector, I enabled the build-in parameter but disabled the build-out parameter. I changed the stage color to black so that when I applied the flares, they would stand out more. I changed the text to say rampantdesigntools.com using a font of my choice. I then applied Studio Flare 046 above everything twice and reversed the scale of one of the flares so that it would appear on both sides of the frame. Let's move on to the other template I used. The next template I used Studio Flares on was this free website opener from Master Motion Templates. This template starts with a reveal of the web address and forms into a website with 3D camera movement until a media player begins playing a video of your choice. Halfway through playing the video, it goes full screen. This template was easy to modify with adding stills and video to drop zones to get the results that I wanted. I used Studio Flares 046, 064, and 528 to enhance the look of this template. Using a variety of blend modes such as Add, Screen, and Soft Light, along with retiming some of the flares, they helped enhance the overall presentation of this template. There are many things that these flares can enhance or create, whether you're in Final Cut Pro X or Premiere Pro. Let's head over to Premiere to learn how to create a cool music video effect. This effect was something I created using Studio Flares, Gradients, and one of my Assemble Effects presets. Let's take a look. I called it Lucid Flares 
based on the appearance of the dancer and the look the flares gave when blended into her frame. Let me show you how to create this effect. I have a 9 second clip of a woman dancing based into camera. I want to isolate the center part of the frame, so I'm going to use a track mat key filter along with the gradient. Let's apply the track mat key to our clip on track 1. I'm going to need a gradient for the next step, so let me get one now. I have a gradient image I created in Photoshop, which you could download from the description below. Let's place it on track 2 making it the same length as our clip. With our clip selected, go to the effects control panel and inside there, change the mat from none to video two. Change compositing two to matte luma. Now, our clip should be isolated to the center of the frame. Let's highlight the clip and the gradient, and then on your keyboard, hold down Option or Alt and drag a duplicate on the tracks 3 and 4. On the clip on track 3, change the mat from None to 4. Now we should have two instances where we have a dancer and a gradient on top of both of them. With this clip still selected, I'm going to apply one of my assemble effects presets, which I call Chaos Overdrive. Chaos Overdrive is one of my assemble effects, which you could download for free by following this link below. With this preset applied, I'm going to move the track mat key filter to the bottom of the stack. Now everything should work properly moving forward. Before I move on, I'm going to break down how the Chaos Overdrive preset works. I have keyframes on the scale and rotation parameters that change every 15 frames until the end of the clip. Next, I have the blend mode set to linear dodge and the opacity set to 85%. With the lighting effects filter applied, I have keyframed the intensity of two spotlights and the radius of an omni light to change every 15 to 25 frames as well. With the color balance filter applied, I circle through four revolutions of the hue parameter to change the color of the lighting effects. Finally, I keyframe the swivel of the basic 3D filter every 4 frames to reverse the clip horizontally. And that is the anatomy of the Chaos Overdrive preset which we could take a look at right now. Let's finish this off by adding some studio flares. I'll be using flares 0, 93, and 138 for this effect, but as always, you can choose whichever flares suit your footage. Let's place flare 138 on track 5. Since this is a 4K clip, I can modify it to taste, so I'm going to select it, go to the effects control panel, twirl down the motion parameter, and change the scale from 100 to 65. Next, I'll go to Opacity and change the Blend Mode to Soft Light. Let's apply the Color Balance HLS filter to it. 
I'm going to set a keyframe for hue at the beginning of the clip with a value of 0. Let's move to the end of the clip and change the value to 360 to get one revolution. Let's go back to the project browser, and I'm going to place Flare 093 on track 6. Let's select a flare on track 6, go to the effects control panel, twirl down the motion parameter, and twirl down the opacity parameter and change the opacity from 100 to 75. Let's change the blend mode from normal to linear dodge. Scrolling through the timeline, you can see that our effect is done, but to really sell it, we're going to need a cool piece of music, so I'm going to take the music I used in the demo and place it in the timeline. I'll give this a quick render and I'll show you the result. So here's the result of our lucid flares. <laughs> As you can see from this example, the studio flares is more than meets the eye, and it can offer so much production value when utilized creatively. As always, I ask that you try to taking this effect or any effect you may create a step further. From the examples that were shown, as well as created, studio flares are a wonderful collection of 4K flares to use and play with. They can be utilized in many ways, but overall, they offer instant production value no matter the project. You can learn more about this product and other products by visiting the Rampant Design Tools website here. You can also keep up with Rampant Design Tools by following them on Twitter at Rampant Design. Feel free to like their Facebook at facebook.com slash rampantmedia. I'm the NLE Ninja with NLE Ninja Effects asking you to stay creative and run rampant. Thanks for watching.